as I always do, it was Jesus himself who said, if you continue in my words, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If the Son set you free, you shall be free indeed. You can say an amen out there. I want to make to you four promises. Promise number one, the Bible is going to be the bedrock of our study. And the reason is the Bible means what it says and says exactly just what it means. Promise number two, you are going to be enlightened irrespective of who you are. Promise number three, you are going to be challenged to make the most important decision of your life. And promise number four, your life and mine will never be the same. Our subject is married or mad. Do you get that? Married or mad. The mad is M-A-R-R-E-D. You see, disfigured, uh, destroyed. Something is mad. So are you married? Are people married or they are mad? Do you get that? Do you know someone in your life that is mad? Are you aware or do you know a family, a couple that have dated and are married, but their marriage is not marriage. They are rather mad. They are not married, but mad. Our scripture text will be Proverbs 24, as usual. Verse number three and verse number four. The Bible says, and I read, through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Malachi, chapter 2. I'll read from verse 13 to 14. And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying. So he does not regard the offerings anymore, nor receive it with goodwill from your hand. Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously, and she is your companion and your wife by covenant. Did you hear that? It's like God is asking the Hebrew man why do you come to church and your body and your eyes are filled with tears at the altar you are crying and you are weeping i don't even take your offering when you bring money to me i don't take it anymore and you want to ask me why he said the reason is simple he says i was a witness when you got married you have not dealt with your wife well at all. That is serious. God says, look, you have been very unfair to the wife of your youth. Though she's your companion, but you've not dealt with her with respect. In other words, when a man deals treacherously, with the wife, God will not bless that man. A man who deals with the wife treacherously, he lacks knowledge, he lacks understanding, he lacks wisdom, and God says, I will not take it for granted. We established in the previous presentation, how did the Bible say a home is built? It's by wisdom. How is a home built? Established is by understanding how is a home filled with precious and pleasant riches is by knowledge. And we know that the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So how come a man who have all this wisdom, all this knowledge, and not be able to love the wife, or a wife knowing all this and will not like love the husband as she ought to? This message will present God's unerring insight and understanding on the subject of love. What is love? 
Do you know what is love? Now everybody is talking about, why are you not talking about love since we started this kind of uh, Bible study? The issue is not just about love. We saw it. We are talking about wisdom. We are talking about understanding. We are talking about knowledge. But since the call is about love, let us know what love is. Let us understand what love is. And let's pick it up from there and see what God is going to teach us in the next couple of minutes on the subjects, married or mad. Point number one, the misunderstanding of family and love is the reason why many families and relationships are failed. You see, many people don't understand love. We talk about love, but we don't understand. We talk about love, but we don't know what it is. You see, it, to the Hebrew or the Greek, to be precise, there are various types of love. We have the erotic love, eros. We have what we call the filial love or affectionate love. We have what we call the storage or the storch. It is a familiar love, a known love. We have what we call the ludos or the ludos. That is the playful kind of love. We have the fifth love called the mania. That is the obsessive love, a love that is very obsessed. It's like if I don't get it, I'm going to die. Then we have what we call the pragma. That is an enduring love. And we have what we call the philatia. That's the self-love. Then we have the agape. That is a selfless love. So to the Greek, love is not just in threefold. Though normally we talk about three. But it is in more than threefold. In fact, we looked about eight. But I want to focus on just a couple of them. I want to focus on the eros. I want to focus on the starch, I want to focus on the philia, and I want to focus on the agape, the four type of love. Why do you love the one you love? I wish I get an answer. Just think about it. Why do you love the woman you love? Why do you love the man you love? Many people are tired of love. They wish somebody will love them properly. What is being done? Look, love because it is misunderstood. People are not excited about it again. Are you in love? What is the guarantee that what you are in is really love? Do you know what is love? Have you experienced love? How does it feel to be loved? Is what you're experiencing love or it is just mere affection? What is love? You see, when we understand love, when we get married, we will never be mad. M-A-R-R-E-D. We will not be disfigured. Pain, perplexity, anxiety, frustration. These things happen because many people are not understanding the concept of love. Number one. You see, love is not a feeling. You see, if love becomes a feeling, then one can choose. When your mood swings, then your love is dependent on your mood. So when you are happy, you are such a blurring, nice, bubbling, sweet, so, so, so attractive to stay by when you are happy. That is a feeling-based love. That is not love. You see, why love is not a feeling? Because if it is a feeling... Meaning it is situational. If it is a feeling, it can be constant. It vacillates. That is not love. Love is not a feeling. You see, we can use what love is not to depict what is love. Love is a choice. I will explain with Bible text. Love is a decision, it's, it's a choice you make. Love is a choice. Love is not just a choice. It is an act of the will. Love is not just a choice. It's not just an act of the will. Love is a decision. It's synonymous to choice. I've decided to love this person. 
I've decided to love this person. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God chose to love us. It's a choice. God decided, it's an act of his will. I want to love these people irrespective of what they have done. So love, it's not just a choice. It's not just an act of the will. It's not a feeling. Let me use a Bible text to make the point. Go to the book of Luke. Go to Luke chapter 6. Luke 6. You know, because we don't have an understanding of love, so young people get into relationship, they are dating, and they get hurt, they are frustrated. Even mature people who are married really don't know about love. Luke chapter 6. It will blow your mind away. Verse number 27. But I say to you, who hear, love your enemies. You will say that. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. Verse 34 of Luke 6. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners, lend to sinners to receive as much back. Verse 35. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, just as your Holy Father is merciful. Did you hear that? I say to you, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Did you know that? In other words, I can't see a man hating the wife. But you who are listening, love your enemies. How can you love your enemy? If love is a feeling, then you cannot love your enemy. If love is a feeling, then you cannot do good to those who hate you. If love is a feeling, then you cannot bless those who curse you. If love is a feeling, then you cannot pray for those who mistreat you or despitefully use you. Love is not a feeling. Love is not a feeling. You see, when chemicals are secreted into your system, I present again today, love is a choice. That is why even your enemies who hate you, you can choose to love them. This is not a suggestion, it's a command. You know who is speaking? Christ. He said, look, if you're a Christian, you need to love those who hate you. How can that be? Therefore, that's why we're saying that love is an act of the will. You need to have the willpower that I'm going to love this woman. I'm going to love this man. I'm going to love this person. You see, here is the point. You see, that is why when, when you love somebody because they have a good shape. When the shape is not there, you can't love them. When you have love somebody because they have a good job, when the job is not there, you can't love them. Love is not a feeling. Love is an act of the will. Love is a choice. Love is a decision. Love, in fact, it is, it is a debt you owe. The Bible says, love your enemy. If you are commanded as a Christian to love your enemy, how can you hate your wife? How can you hate your husband? Do you understand that? Our subjects come up higher. From where you are, God wants to take you to the next level of your understanding of what is love. 
Look, love is not just an act of the will. It's a decision. Go to the book of Matthew chapter 5. Our subjects come up higher. Everyone is talking about I'm in love. Love is, you don't fall in love. You choose to be in love. How can you fall in love? I may be wrong, but I'm just saying what I see in scripture. Matthew 5, verse 43. Listen carefully. You have heard <laughs> that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise up on the evil and on the good. And send rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even tax collectors do the same. If you greet your brethren, only what, what do you get? Verse 48, therefore be perfect as your holy father is perfect. That's a higher ground. God is saying, love someone who hates you. So love cannot be a feeling. Did you get that? My sister, begin to understand that when you see a man and you're having palpitations and you are having high blood pressure, that is not love. Love is a, is a feeling? No, it's a choice. It's a decision. It's the act of the will. It, 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 you just choose, the Bible says, through wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. Do you understand love? If you understand, then your house will be established. If you know what is love, then you are going to bear fruit. Then if you apply it, then your house will be built indeed. Let me make it further. Our subject is married or mad. Under the bigger caption, come up higher. You see, love is a debt that we owe. These are biblical insights. They are, they are no one's property. They, they, no philosopher. No, 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 no. It, 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 it's from the Bible. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Listen carefully. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. So love is a debt you owe. Why do you love the one you love? Is it because of a feeling? Is it because, why do you love the person you love? You see, the Greek word for the love God has for us is agape. You see, when we talk about agape, Romans 5 explains that. Verse 8, Romans 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his love towards us. In that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Did you see that? The, 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 the agape love is the only love that can make a woman forgive a cheating spouse. I'm sorry, no kind of love. The reason why people divorce are so funny. He doesn't respect me. He beats me. He abuses me. Whereas those are bad for a man to do. God forgive us. Those are bad for a woman to abuse the, wife, the husband. But the Bible says if it is a love, that is God's type of love. It says, but God commanded his love towards us. Whilst we were yet sinners, sinners are enemies of God. Whilst we were enemies of God, he chose to love us. It was not a feeling. Love is not emotion. Love is a choice. Love is to understand the value of the object of love. I will say it differently. The reason why people don't love their spouses, they don't understand what is love. What is the most expensive item you have? 
When you buy a brand new car, I don't know if, uh, to the young people, when you, okay, let's say when you have a brand new phone, you've just bought the latest phone in town. You see the care you give to it. There is a correlation between love and value. You cannot love something without valuing it. You cannot value something if you don't love it. They are like a Siamese twins. Genesis 1 verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. In the image of God, he created the man and female, he created them. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Value is what you are ready to pay for that which you cherish or love. So ask me, how do we see? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? It's not because Christ died that has made me precious or make, made you precious. We are already valuable. Because God knew the value he has placed in you. Because he knew that you are already made in his image, in his likeness. So God knew your value. So therefore he was willing to give the whole heaven to die on your behalf and on my behalf. Calvary is a demonstration of God's value of mankind. The point must be made, ladies and gentlemen. The next time someone opens their mouth and says, I love you, ask them, what value are you willing to pay? Value is what you are ready to pay for that which you cherish or love. So when a man or a woman say, I am in love, but I'm not ready to pay any price. I'm not ready to sacrifice anything. It is not love. If someone say, I love you, you know, Samuela always say that I love God's will. I know the price she has paid. She left the country of birth. She left her family. She left her all. She left her career. She left her profession because of a man. That is love. What are you willing to pay for the one you love? What are you willing to give up for the one you love? Somebody can be proud to say, you know what? Men love their wives, but they can cheat on them. That cannot work. If you love your wife, you love your husband, you can't cheat on them because you are willing to pay the price. The price is all other women I forsake, all other men are forsaken just for your sake. So when people say that I love her, but I'm just cheating on her, she should understand. That is not love. You love me, but you cannot give up that girl for me. You love me, but you cannot give up that man for me. You love me, but you cannot give up that character, that attitude for my sake. Love gives up a lot in exchange of the object of its love. Christ left the whole heaven just because he loves us. So love is not an adverb. It's not a noun. It's an action word. May I submit today? If you love somebody, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Talk is cheap. So when a man says, I love you, and ladies, sometimes it, it gets me worried when you always want to be told, he loves me. You want to hear him say every day, I love you, I love you, I love you. Watch what he does. Love is not what you say. God did not just say that I love mankind. He demonstrated his love towards us by emptying the entire heaven. So when you understand love, you can't be fooled. You watch your object of love's attitude, his mannerism, his behavior, his attitude towards you. Love is not an adverb. It is a verb. Love is not a noun. It's not an adjective. Love is an action word. So your actions determine if you love or you do not love.
The point must be made. When I was getting married, I told my wife, I got to take a man, sir. Do take the Henry Samuel Avandi to be my lawful wedded wife. Hmm. And promise and covenant before God and this witnesses to have thee, to hold thee, and love thee, and be with thee after God's own ordinance in the holy state of matrimony. Did you hear that? I do solemnly promise before God to be thy loving and faithful husband, to be true to thee in every condition of life, in prosperity and in adversity, in sickness and in health. I promise to keep myself to thee and to thee only until death do as part. All this I faithfully promise my heavenly father being my witness. This was just a vow I've made. Now my wife needs to see if I'm living up that. Ladies and gentlemen, love is not just a feeling. It's a choice. Love is an act of the will. Love is a decision. Love is a debt you owe to the object of your love. And Christ says, love your enemy. Pray for those who hate you. A man, a woman, who doesn't understand this, cannot be good in marriage. Never. Never. Three things are needed for you to go to a higher ground. Wisdom. Knowledge. And understanding. We're going to deal with the other part of this, married or mad. Join us at our next session. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I pray for our friends. I pray for myself. Teach us, Lord, to understand what is love. To love unconditionally. To love without reservation. To love indeed and in word. Bless so that we can know love. In Jesus' name.